they can't all be winners. Written by Nick TBA. Hey everyone, I'm a comedian, and I'd like to test out some material for a stand-up show I've got coming up. This audience has heard all of my material, so I whipped this story up for them. I'd love feedback if anyone has the time. Just keep in mind that this is being addressed to my club audience, not you guys here. And I've also included notes, if my action or tone of voice is important to the bit. There's an interesting tale in it for anyone who stays to the end, not to mention a hell of a punchline. <laughs> so, without further ado, here it goes. I learned long ago not to get hung up on bad jokes. You know, not all of my jokes are great. I know that. Sometimes I just need to get through filler until I can get to the punchline. And even the jokes that I think are good don't always land. You can't please everybody, right? You get through them and move on. Well, that's not always true. Let me give you an example. So, I was performing at a gig in Arizona. I traveled with my friends, Lex and Hutch, doing small shows around the country. We weren't selling out big venues, but people knew our names. Hutch and Lex were an item. I usually drove from show to show in our van because Lex was night blind and Hutch didn't have his driver's license. Of course, I ended up having to listen to them constantly making out in the back of the van. Now, I assume Lex and Hutch had been in other relationships before, but you wouldn't know that by listening to them kiss. Ugh. Sounded like two wet hams smacking together back and forth. Whew. Anyway, that wasn't as bad as when I would hear them screaming in the back. I'd hear them moan. Oh baby, oh baby, come on Lex, give it to me. Meanwhile, I'm in the front seat, jerking it to shapely cacti. And I won't even go into the used condoms I'd find in the back seat after their little sessions. Needless to say, I was a little jealous. So I started thinking of a joke to play on them. I wanted it to be a big one, you know? Well, I thought of a whopper, and I decided to unleash it in front of an audience. As I was saying, I was performing at this gig in Arizona, I was on after Hutch, but before Lex. So, I get up on stage after he finishes his set and start right into it. Now, picture me up on that stage. It looked a lot like this one, but just nicer. While I tell you my opener, it went a little something like this. Give it up for Hutch, everyone. His set ended a little early, but Hutch usually finishes first. I know because I get to hear him and Lex, our closing act, fucking in the back of our tour van. Now, they're probably just trying to be nice and give me something to listen to since our tape deck is busted, but I'm a rock and roll fan. Not so much a fan of listening to Hutch screaming as he comes. Recently, I thought I'd repay their generosity with a very friendly gift. In fact, I've already given it to them. But they don't know it yet. Lex makes Hutch rubber up every time they go at it. Sure, they practice safe sex, but they don't wear their safety belts. There's gotta be some kind of irony there. Anyway, I found Lex's condom stash and, well, prophylactic met thumbtack, you see. That was like, uh, four weeks ago. So, you're welcome, Hutch and Lex. I gave you guys the gift of life. I'm sure you'll be great parents. Oh, sorry about the HIV though, Hutch. That was all Lex's gift, not mine. I guess I should have known though, since I'm the one who gave it to her first. Guess she regifted. <laughs> now the crowd was having a good time when I finished the joke. Like I said earlier, not all the jokes landed, and that's okay, 
because not everything had to kill. It just had to get me to the end. But for the most part, they were into it. Hutch, however, was not a fan. I watched his face twist in anger as he shot out of his seat and didn't even stay to watch the rest of my set. It was all a lie, of course. Most of the stories that comedians tell are lies, or embellished. I thought Hutch knew that. Guess I was wrong. I finished my set and went to the green room, thinking that I'd send Lex out there. But Lex was plastered all over the walls. Hutch stood over her, a chilled bottle of champagne in his hand, bloody condensation dripping down the neck and running off his hand. He stared at me with icy eyes, his chest heaving. His teeth cracked. They were grating together so hard. You and her? I remember him growling. He charged at me, the bottle raised above his head. I always thought I was going to die by alcohol, but I thought it'd be from drinking it. <clears throat> there was a microphone stand by the door. It was the only thing I could think of to grab to defend myself with. But I was hit across the head before I could reach it. I probably would have died then, but the door opened. A stagehand shouting angrily for Lex to come on stage. He stopped mid-sentence. Maybe shocked by the dead body. Maybe just shocked by how much work he'd be doing cleaning up the mess. Either way, it was enough to make Hutch stop. Long enough for me to grab the microphone stand and jab it into his belly. When he fell, I got up and kept on jabbing. The stagehand had run away by this point, and I figured he was probably calling the cops. The microphone stand ended up going right through Hutch's belly. As he lay there, coughing up blood and dying, he said something to me that freaked me out. I ran outside to the van, worried that I'd be arrested when the police came. My head was kind of fuzzy from getting hit by that bottle as I started the car and swerved off down the road. I don't really remember much except bright lights coming at me from an oncoming semi. So, what did Hutch tell me? Well, as he was dying, he said, I'll see you in hell. Well, as I look around at all your lovely sharp grins and horn heads, Getting ready to tell the same jokes I tell every night for longer than I can even count. I think to myself, Hutch, buddy, I don't see you yet. <laughs> I guess the lucky bastard survived. But he's probably sitting in death row, so it shouldn't be too long till we're reunited. But hey, it's hard to tell how long an eternity will take. Hey. Maybe I'll explain to him one simple fact about telling jokes. They can't all be winners. And that's the end of it, folks. Thanks for reading, and hope you had a laugh. Maybe a good cry, too. Let me close by saying, I'm not sure why people trust psychics with talking to their loved ones. Just shoot them an email. If they're anything like me, they can still get them. <laughs>